Greetings to one and all. This is Dr. Narayan from Open Fund Innovation Labs. Today, we are going to learn how to use decision tree and random forest in financial markets to generate trading signals and how to use the historical data for this purpose. This code has also been uploaded in the GitHub library and the link has been shared along with this video where you can go through this program and make the necessary changes. And this is purely for educational purpose uh, to learn the decision tree and the classification task, how it performs and how it can be used for the financial markets. So the first thing first, so we will import uh, certain libraries such as Pandas as PD, NumPy as NP, from date time, import date time, import matplotlib, cborn. So then next you have to read the data set. For this example, we have used Bajaj Finance. You can use any of the data set and we have used the Yahoo Finance library, which is free source, freely available uh, library source. So whichever uh, ticker you want to use, if it is National Stock Exchange, it comes as .ns. So we have used Bajaj Finance .ns. You can use Dr. Reddy or whichever script you may choose. So we have downloaded here uh, the historical data from the year 2021 to the year January 2025. Basically from January 2021 to January 2025. As per city rules, we are uh, we are required to use three months old chart in uh, for the purpose of the educational purposes. That is why the end date is given as January 2025 as we are in April. Then data is equal to df.copy data.head. This is your uh, uh, the last, the starting data of your Bajaj Finance and the close price, high price, low, open, volume, everything you get. And this is the ending data. Uh, we have end the data at 16 January 2025. This basically has 988 columns and uh, uh, sorry, 988 rows and five columns. The five columns are nothing but the um, close price, high, open, volume, etc. Next, you have to generate the target volume uh, values. We define data returns as NP log. We use the log of the pre uh, close data and the previous close data. That is why you have shift of one. That is the previous close. We are comparing with today's close to find out if the returns are positive, negative. Uh, or uh, the values have stayed the same. So in this case, uh, if the data returns uh, either as 0, 1 or uh, either as 0 or 1, that means uh, either the previous uh, today's close price is higher than the previous close price, then it will take as 1. And if the today's close price is lesser than the previous close price, it will take as 0. Okay, next we have what is known as the uh, feature selection. Um, all this uh, are part of your machine learning course. You would have learned this and we are trying to use it for our, uh, for analyzing the financial data for the last four years. So import Seaborn as SNS and import matplotlib. These are the basically the returns <laughs> which you are seeing as a scatter plots. These are daily returns. As you can see, the maximum positive returns per day, uh, the, uh, you have 5% returns, very rare, 7% and 10% returns, very rare. And on the y-axis, you have the volume and the x-axis, you have the returns, daily returns. These are not weekly or monthly returns. In feature selection, uh, our intuition says that only these two features may not be able to capture the, all the intricacies of the stock movement. We need more features. So we use loading standard deviation, rolling close price, percentage close price, volume, uh, everything. So all the features you can list out here. You can add the features which you may feel it more important than this. Here I have used standard deviation, moving average, uh, then daily percentage change, features based on volume, volume moving average, and the intraday movement. That is the uh, close price minus the open price. So these are the feature lists. And data.info, you will get all the feature list percentage, volume, moving average, standard deviation, 5, 10, 15. We have used, you can use uh, your own uh, values if you want. 
So feature list plus target, uh, these are the uh, feature list uh, data of the feature list, standard deviation 5, 10, 15, moving average 10, 15, 20, 25 moving average. So all this we have used. Next is to generate the training and the testing data set. For this, we use the, from the sklearn model, selection import train test split uh, data set. So you have to train, uh, test and the split the data sets. Usually the test size we have taken as to 25% of the total data set. So that you can change from uh, 20 to 30, 15 to 25% is normally taken. Then you have to define the model. From uh, scikit-learn, uh, we are importing the decision tree classifier. So decision tree classifier in this, we have maximum depth of the 3S3 and random status 1. If you know the decision tree classifier, you should define the depth of the decision tree. Moment you use the command import decision tree classifier, this will be important and you don't have to define the decision tree and only you have to define the feature size. That is the maximum depth of the tree and all. Then you have to train the model. So you have model.fit, extreme, y train, maximum depth as three and random state as one. Then you have to predict the model. So model accuracy on the training data is 60% and the model accuracy on the testing data is coming as 56%. So 75% is your training data. Based on the training data, we are using that to use for the test data. And uh, so your accuracy on the training and the data and the test data will be different. Then you have to evaluate the model. Already we have seen the model accuracy on the training data is 60% and model accuracy on the Testing data is 56%. So then you can uh, visualize this using the confusion matrix and the classification report. So this is your confusion matrix. Uh, how many long and the short signals have been uh, generated and how many have been predicted actual as compared to the uh, predicted values you can compare. So that same 60% and 56% you get you uh, you can see this value in the confusion matrix also this uh, classification report will give you the precision recall f1 score and the support uh, so precision uh, is very important accuracy you will get uh, what 56 percent we discussed uh, recall and the f1 score which are very important for analyzing the data as per your machine learning algorithm so this is you can generate the tree if the moving uh, uh, using Guinea index and uh, the samples, uh, the tree is being generated. This is your decision tree. And uh, these are the feature selection values. So uh, feature selection, uh, what importance it has taken. So the percentage change and the moving average and the standard deviation have been taken the maximum importance if you see percentage change uh, and this one. Next, uh, we also compare this with our random forest classifier, which is uh, uh, many times uh, a better tool compared to your decision tree. So in the random forest classifier also from scikit-learn.ensemble, you can import the random forest classifier. And in the random forest classifier, you can tell the number of estimators as 20, maximum depth as 3, and maximum leaf nodes as 5. These are some of the values I have inserted. So based on your uh, requirement, you can obviously change this value. So minimum sample leaf size is one, all those things. Again, training data and testing data. You can see the model accuracy on the training data. Uh, when we are using the random forest classifier, is slightly better than the decision tree where we are getting 63.85% uh, model accuracy on the training data. And the model accuracy on the test data is slightly improved 56.8% from 56%. So that comes to around 57%. Here, the importance uh, in decision tree importance are changed and it is given more equal importance. The most important feature, which is it is taking a standard deviation, next as percentage change. If you have seen the decision tree, it has taken the percentage change as the most important feature selection. Whereas in the ran uh, random forest classifier, it has taken standard deviation as one of the uh, most important features to be this one. Uh, based on this, again, we are finding the accuracy score, confusion matrix, and the classification report. So, same thing you can do. Uh, you can see the uh, you can see the accuracy is 57%, slightly improved 1% improvement as compared to the decision tree. 
again you will get the recall and the f1 score in this and this is the confusion matrix actual predicted cell and the actual predicted by and the uh, actual signals and the predicted by and the predicted cells then you can also generate the signals so this is based 50 signals we are generating that is there in the program which is uploaded in your github library signals dot take 50 signals we are generating so based on the previous data it is generating signals here okay so this is your actual signal and this is the predicted signal so actually is by predicted is also by you would have made a profit if you had uh, taken this trade on 4th november 2024 so uh, this is the actual predicted and the uh, predicted signal actual signal and the predicted signal so you can even generate the signals so if you use the strategy returns and compare to buy and hold returns so you would have got a uh, yeah, return of around 26.24 percent uh, as compared to buy and hold returns of 0.1 percent meaning uh, the buy and the sell if you do aggressively based on uh, the signals generated by the machine learning algorithm you would have made a 26 percent return as compared to just buy and hold returns which you would not have generated that much return thank you very much for uh, watching this video till the end if you are interested uh, more to learn about this we have a tailored made course uh, which is specifically where, uh, where we will teach python for finance along with statistics and advanced excel that is a, a four month uh, mentorized curated course and the details are available in our website uh, which is given in the link below Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. Thank you.